Episode 9, Stradivarius versus the Washburn N4. This is really about why the guitar is more popular than the violin. This episode is dedicated to Cyrus Freeman, the first subscriber to his channel. A while ago, Cyrus asked me to do an episode involving the Washburn N4 electric guitar, undoubtedly a culturally significant guitar. So it's time to compare a violin to the guitar because the comparison, it's had it coming. So the key question here is, why is the guitar more popular than the violin? It's a very subjective terminology, but here I go. Think about a violin. A violin in the untrained hand sounds a lot like cat scratching in um, cat scratch something. Eee! So if you have a cat scratching that noise coming from a beginner or a, or a Tyro's playing hands, it's not very encouraging. You gotta work on it uh, for a while before you start getting that, the tone that you want. It requires a lot of practice in theory as well as uh, having a good understanding of the 12 step music notation uh, system. And you can only play two notes at a time, which actually depends on the fingerboard arch rate radius of the violin. There are some modern day, uh, let's see, musicians who have made uh, violins very, very popular, especially in country uh, bluegrass music. Charlie Daniels, Kentucky bluegrass, although in that part of the, country, the US, it's commonly referred to as the fiddle. Look at the guitar. The, uh, the guitar that we know today has its origins thanks to a, a Spanish carpenter. Yes, that's right. He was actually a furniture builder, a carpenter, and so forth. Antonio Torres. It's classical music in the, let's see, the design in origin because it was basically designed to, uh, designed to play classical music. Acoustic steel strings that are used for, for, used for the guitar today. That, uh, the credit for, for that really goes to companies such as Washburn, C.F. Martin, and Gibson. So, yay America. And speaking of Americans, um, it was also the Americans who, uh, who were able to electrify these, uh, the guitar, thanks to a distant cousin of fast Eddie Rickenbacker. I think his name was Adolfo Sir Rickenbacker. Swiss people, by the way. And then culturally speaking, people such as Les Paul, Jimi Hendrix, Brian May, and Nuno Benecourt have made the, at least the guitar, electric guitar much more popular amongst the, uh, the music listening masses compared to the violin. If you look at, uh, at cultural moments with, with respect to the violin, in the early 1980s, there was a, a mo Australian movie called Young Einstein. It was produced by a man named Yahoo Sirius. Your name is really Yahoo? Well, yes, uh, certainly. You can't be serious. Why, absolutely. This is a movie where, this is where Einstein, who grows up in Tasmania, ends up as a discovering roll and rock. Look at the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, see, here's, a, here's somebody who was classically trained on the piano from South Africa originally. Look up uh, the, the album called, let's see, uh, I think it was called Under the Table and Dreaming. It was either his second or third uh, album with the Dave Matthews Band. Specifically, look up the song called Ants Marching. Albert Einstein, by the way, in real life, actually played the, the violin, not the fiddle. Nobody knows how good he was at it, but he kept working at it. And then, let's see, for Arnold Schwarzenegger fans out there, look for a movie called True Lies. With Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, let's see, dancing the tango with Tia Carrere. The, let's see, the violin and the other the stringed instruments you hear in the background is a song called Por Una Cabeza. And then let's going back to the, so that, to the, that to the Russians. Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov was famous for his composition called Flight of the Bumblebee, which was also made by very popular as a theme song for the Green Hornet. That's right, the one with Bruce Lee. Let's look at, uh, let's, let's look at call, let's cultural relevance with respect to the guitar. Now, the same Young Einstein movie, Yahoo! Sirius essentially, essentially ends up taking his electric guitar basically a modified violin which I don't know if it was actually tuned from fifths to fourths that's for that's for other people with a lot of time in their hands to f figure out essentially ended up let's see using it as an electric gu guitar in order to depower an atomic bomb well actually uh, let's say a beer container that was about to go kablooey and then look at Nuno Benincourt from the band Extreme 
specifically, let's see, their second album called Pornography. That's it. And look for a song called Flight of the Wounded Bumblebee, which was made possible with help from Dweezil Zappa. Yes, a digital delay coupled to a MIDI drum machine. It's actually uh, quite hard to play. Uh, let's see, so on the guitar, it takes a lot of practice. It can, be, it can be done if you want to take the time to practice it. And also, think about this movie called Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. The guy who plays the, as, as I played the, the guitarist, I think his the character name is Nigel Tofnell, refers to his martial amplifiers. These go to 11. Why did I come up with uh, Stradivarius versus Washburn N4? Stradivarius, these are, uh, the, these are violins and other stringed instruments made by Stradivarius several hundred years ago. The guy's obviously not alive anymore, so they're no longer made. And these days, they sell in the millions, with many scientists trying to, to figure out its mystical properties regarding why does it sound so good, which is a subjective term. But for what they sell for these days, obviously some people with a lot of money think so. And then you look at the Washburn N4. Here's an electric guitar. It's very, it looks very basic. It's an oil finish, tongue oil finish. Alder, bo alder body, well, in some cases you've got uh, padauk. Um, I think there was a swamp ash at, at one point. The neck is generally maple or, or padauk. Lot of, but it had lots of innovations uh, to the 12 string, uh, not the 12 string, uh, six string guitar. Although there is a model of the, the, the Washburn M4 variation of it, which, which is a double neck and has a 12 string uh, function on it. Stevens extended uh, cutaway. So, uh, so basically the, the bolt, on, bolt on neck, uh, let's see, it's, f it's basically five full bolts versus four. And it was, uh, and tonally speaking, you hear the difference. Then you got the, the DeBill Lawrence L500 uh, uh, pickups. They really are very, pretty loud and they're pretty f uh, fun to, uh, to play with. And Nuno Benancourt, also by having the Washburn uh, so put on carbon fiber fretboard on it, it's pretty slick, actually. It's, let's see. It feels artificial, but you don't really notice that the fingerboard as, as much because it's just very slick, period. And then Stephen Davies, an American, was, was responsible for inventing the, uh, the Stevens Extended Cutaway neck design. Although I'd have to say the Washburn's as a customer service could be better, uh, but... But then again, it's very hard to match the customer service of Taylor guitars. So at the end, of some other thoughts that come to mind here, after comparing the Stradivarius or violin to or fiddle for the Kentucky folks to the classical guitar and nowadays the electric guitar. Gene Simmons and Noodle Benincourt, by their admission, essentially made this, uh, basically confirmed that. The instrument itself doesn't necessarily make the artist a unique sound. Gene Simmons in the early 1990s in the Guitar World or the magazine as article essentially explained that you, you could use any, uh, any instrument to make the sound that, that you want. Except in the, except in the case of, of an instrument that is so brilliant, it's inspiring. Okay, there you may have a case for where the instrument actually makes the artist sound. But in general, you could use any instrument to make the sound that, that you want, because it's the player, not necessarily the instrument. And Nuno Benincourt, for a long time, he just wanted to try out Eddie as a Van Halen or Edvard Van Halen in Dutch. Uh, his rig, the uh, the 5150 PV amplifiers and, and all that stuff, just to get the brown sound. And then when finally Eddie invited him over to, to check out and play Eddie's rig, Nuno tried it out. He tried it, and then he realized, wait, I still sound like me. No. So, uh, so one question to think about is, what really makes uh, the violin different compared to the, compared to the, uh, to the guitar, and, uh, and what is it about the guitar that makes it more popular? Getting back to the original question, well, a lot of guitar players they sing, not all, uh, they sing and play the guitar at the same time, but violin players you har you hardly see violin players playing with a neck like this and singing at the same time. Not even Rednecks, the, I think it's, it's a Swedish band, uh, let's see, with Cotton Eye Joe came closer to, to this. And Tracy Bonham, who's actually a classically trained uh, as a violin player, 
in her first album called, let's see, The Burdens of Being Upright, especially in the song called Mother Mother, she does play the violin, but when she's, when she's playing on stage, she, when she's singing, she's playing the guitar, not the violin. So, so because you could do multitasking at the same time with the guitar versus uh, with the violin, because the violin requires some more concentration, I would, I would say that's the reason why guitars such as the Washburn M4 will become much, will be much more popular and much more accessible, at least uh, uh, culturally speaking, to the Western music masses. All right, it's the Kevin Bacon game time. So by six degrees of separation, although a Spaniard invented the guitar, Italians such as Luca Stricanoli, Russians such as Alexander Misko, Japanese such as, let's see, let's see, what's his name? Kent Nishimura, as well as a Korean guy, uh, Songha Jung, or in Korean, Jung Songha. They basically show that race and ethnicity doesn't matter when it comes to playing the, the instrument, either the violin or the guitar well. Thanks for listening. If you have any other questions or any suggestions on the topic, feel free to list them in the comment section. Till next time.